went to this retreat in Maryland a couple weeks ago um, with vet veterans who suffer from PTS. And there's probably, you know, 22, 24 veterans there. And a good third of them were on these obscene cocktails of drugs. I mean, four or five, one or two of them were on, you know, eight plus drugs a day. I didn't understand how they were walking. I mean, I didn't understand how they were even mildly functioning as human beings based on, on what they were taking. But um, it's just astounding to think that any doctor would, would consider that acceptable. You know, it's not, it's not practice. It really is. Yeah. If you have someone on eight psych drugs, yeah. that's just plain out flat malpractice. There is no evidence anywhere that shows that's good for somebody. Yeah. It all shows that it's bad. So. Yeah. And, and I'm with you. I don't understand how people get out of bed when they're on eight, eight of these different drugs. Yeah. It's, it's quite astounding. And just the wholesale denial, uh, the denial of the potential for adverse effects. You know, when I, when I was going through my worst, uh, part of it, probably just over a year ago now, um, my family was still pushing me because they believed in the system. They believed in the, the, you know, the medical model for mental illness and they were pushing me to go see more psychiatrists and go get more treatment. So I, I gave in and I, I went to a, a local psychiatrist who I hadn't seen. I wrote, you know, I focused all of my cognitive abilities to write like a two page rap sheet of like who I was, what had transpired over the last three to four years since I had started being exposed to the drugs presented it to this guy. It listed all the, you know, 10 plus different drugs I'd been on, presented it to this, this gentleman. He read it, skimmed over it in 20 seconds, and he said, I see you haven't tried Cymbalta yet. <laughs> it, it was a watershed moment. I don't mean to be laughing, but. <laughs> no, I laughed too. I, I burst out laughing and I said, I think we're done here. Just because it was such a level of denial and failure to recognize you know, it was just, it was astounding. And that, that was really the moment for me where I was like, this is all a joke. This is all one big, really sick, um, joke that a lot of people are succumbing to, unfortunately. You know, what's so tragic and, and just hard to understand is any good medicine is if something's not working, you don't keep trying the same thing, but it's just amazing within psychiatry. They just keep throwing more drugs, more drugs as if somehow eventually they'll find something they believe that might work. I mean, it's really, it's bad medicine. It really so is. my introduction to psychiatry, I say my gateway drug to psychiatry was Ativan that I was given um, for over two years. And I took it two years. Two years. Two years yeah. I took it at, at prescribed levels, never abused it. Um, you know, went back to my doctor and explained over the time. And, and it's, it's crazy. In hindsight, you can look back and start connecting the dots and you're like, you know, from day one, it was the drugs and it just made exacerbated things. But of course, when you're experiencing it in the moment, you're like, my condition's getting worse. I need more help. You know, you believe, you know, I was in a stressful situation. I was in grad school. There's a lot of, you know, a lot going on. I was trying to, to get through and just became dependent on the medical model and uh, to get me through it instead of yeah. understanding that what I was going through was just basic stress and, uh, you know, anxiety from being a really heavily burdened grad student. But you'll appreciate this story. So I've been working part-time uh, at the same place I was working when I was healthy. And my boss, he knew who I was. He knew I was a, a really you know intelligent, hardworking, initiative-taking guy. And he had kind of seen my decline. So he's been fully aware of my situation. He's been fully supportive of it. He's believed me 100%. So two months ago, he takes a leave of absence from work for about two weeks. He gets back and he tells me, Dave, our GP, and he had just found this out, his GP had been giving his wife three milligrams of Ativan a day for a month. And you know what, for all things, so that she wouldn't be anxious participating in her kid's school play. So they took this perfectly fit, perfectly healthy mother of three, gave her three milligrams of Ativan for a month, she spent several weeks in an inpatient facility because she thought she was going insane. They put her on Remeron and um, Gabapentin. And now she's, you know, and he's, he totally buys my side of it and your side of it. I've given him your book to read and, and shared, you know, uh, some of your research and understanding. And, and it's just, you know, it, it's just crazy that this, my boss who knew my story 
had seen my decline in the, the literal nightmare that I was living through, the exact same thing happened to his wife. And if I hadn't been there to educate them on my experience, they would have gone down the same rabbit hole that I did and would have ended up on years of drugs and thought that she had some sort of mental disease. And it just, when that happened so close to me, and I know, I mean, I think the statistic is one in five, one in six U.S. adults have are on psych drugs or have been on psych drugs, something to that effect. I see it. I see it all around me. It's, yeah. it's, it's every corner I turn, someone is on a psych drug or a combination of psych drugs. It's everywhere. It's just permeated the entire society. And, and you know, both your story and the story you just told about the woman told about how that rabbit hole opens up in the easiest of ways. Yep. Some minor thing people are struggling with, and then of people say, take this, and then, you know, next thing you know, they're, de they're falling down that rabbit hole, and three months later, six months later, nine months later, their whole life has changed. They're dealing often with multiple drugs, but they don't understand the prescribers I'm talking about, that that initial prescription sends you down a different road so often. It's, it's, and they, but, yeah, but they're not thinking about that, the consequences of it. But this is actually a big moment, whether you're going to go on this or not. Absolutely. It's, it's amazing Absolutely. to me the, the, the sort of facile way these drugs are handed out. With any sort of, any sort of actual consideration about what you're going to be setting up for the person. It's just, hey, take an aspirin. But it's not an aspirin.